Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Recording Made Easy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this time out, we're gonna take a new look um, at the Kit Plugins BB105 Blackbird um, version two of this channel strip. Um, I did a review of this when it first came out, version one, I don't know, a few months back. Um, and since then, they've upgraded to version two. This is the famous uh, Neve console in, owned by John McBride and Blackbird Studios. It's can, it's uh, I, I forget the, the name of the, I forget the exact model of the console, but it's a complete, it's a complete customized, rebuilt console. There's nothing else in the world quite like it, and this is a, supposed to be an accurate model of that. Now, I will say that when I did the first version of this plugin, um, I actually liked it. I did a review on it. I did a full mix with it. Uh, over at my mixing membership website, mixingmadeeasy.net. All the links will be in the description box below. Um, and I actually um, like the plugin. Um, since that time, there's been some YouTube videos <clears throat> and some folks complaining about that the plugin was quote unquote broken or certain things weren't working. And there was some controversy around that. And I guess kit plugins went ahead and upgraded and fixed whatever issues there were. I personally didn't have any issue with it. I found it to work and sound great in the reviews and the mixes I've done with it. So I'm not really too clear on what exactly the issues were. I tried to talk to the folks over at Kit Plugins when they asked me to do this review, um, and they weren't really clear on um, what some of the issues were exactly, but that they did fix the things and they made some improvements with the GUI, so on and so forth, and we'll walk through those features. So again, full disclosure, Kit Plugins had reached out to me because I did the first review, um, and the first review, I just demoed the plugin off their website. They didn't give me the plugin or anything. It was just, I was just doing it because it came out, and I wanted to bring it to you guys. They saw that video, liked the review, and asked me, if I would do this one and gave me this plugin for free so I can do this review for you. But they have not seen the video, they have not talked to them about anything about it. I'm just gonna do the review and I'm gonna say you know what I think of it. So um, go ahead and just know that they, that they did give me this plugin for free. Anyway, the link will be in the description box below if you wanna go check it out and demo it and buy it for yourself. I don't get anything from it, so let's just say that right up front. Um, so here is the plugin here, <clears throat> pardon me. Now it does look a little bit nicer than the original version. I guess they made it a little bit more 3D looking. The GUI's a little bit more, um, the resolution of it maybe is a little bit better. Um, at least that's what they claim. You can resize it by grabbing this corner here and dragging it uh, up and down if you wanna make it bigger or smaller, which is really cool. And there is a couple additional features that wasn't in the first one. So let's walk to the feature set and then I will listen to it on some drums, percussion, bass, piano, and some acoustic guitar just so you can kind of hear what it does. So along the top here, we have our um, little drop down box here. They have a bunch of presets if you wanna check those out. They got some uh, user presets that you can save some uh, KIT kit presets here, um, a whole bunch of them here, and then some Blackbird presets as well. So you can always check those out. Top here, we have our mic, when we, um, our mic level to drive the preamp. Underneath that, we can switch from the line level to mic level. And on some of these tracks on the drums, I did use the mic level and drove the preamp and then turned down the fader output, which I'll show you. And then other ones, I just used the mic level. Um, we have a saturation uh, switch on and off here to add some saturation to the circuit. Then we have our EQ here. There's no compression on this particular plugin. It's really just the preamp and the EQ. So we have our high frequency up here, and this is like a two-tiered uh, switch, if you will. So underneath, you'll see the little line. If I click on the frequency, you'll see that it switches here, okay? And then you have plus or minus 15 dB on these, um, on these EQs. Um, so that's our high frequency, and it could be a bell or a shelf here. Uh, and we also have our uh, high mids here. We have our low mids and our lows. And again, you can also, on the, on the mids, uh, you can use a high Q, which is gonna narrow the Q a little bit more. And that's really it. Um, and then down at the bottom here, we have our low cut filter. We have a phase switch here, and then we can take the EQ on and off. If you didn't wanna use the EQ and just use the preamp, you can do that. On the right hand side, we have our fader here. We have our output level. We can turn on the hum level. We have a hum level one, two, three, and we can turn that on and off with this switch here, okay? Um, at the top, underneath the um, presets, we have an auto gain, which will compensate if you boost the preamp. Apparently, it'll turn the gain on automatically in the plugin. We have a continuous, which means when it is on the mic level, um, if I take continuous off and I put it on mic level, they are stepped um, They are stepped values. If I go to continuous, it's more sweepable. You can get a little bit more, it's, it's continuous. So it's not stepped, it's continuous. You can dial in um, more accurately how much you wanna drive the preamp. It is only for the preamp here. 
Then next to that, we have our fader where you can change the color of the fader. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but I like the color blue. And then underneath here, which is kind of cool, we have some options. We have oversampling, 4, 8, and 16. Now, there was oversampling in the first one, and I think that was some of the controversy around the oversampling. Again, even with the oversampling being fixed, as it were, in this version, um, I've got it on 16 times oversampling. What is oversampling going to do? Well, oversampling, the way I understand it from the company is, it's just a more accurate way where it sounds a little bit more authentic to the hardware the more you oversample it because it's get, you have more, um, more accuracy, maybe. Um, what I do like about this version, too, is you can link the oversampling across all the instances of the plugin so you can switch between the oversampling rates to see if we could hear any audible difference and we'll do that because this is more of a cumulative effect thing. It's not like you could just drop it on your master bus, switch between four, eight and 16 and hear this wild difference. It's not like that. There may be some subtle differences. Um, keep in mind that when you oversample, typically your CPU usage is going to go up. Um, I'll show you that although with my computer in with studio one, because the way they've optimized things, it has very little effect. So I guess you can play around with that on whether you want to use oversampling, but I do like the fact that you can link it across all the instances that makes it easier to be able to, to detect whether or not oversampling is something you want to do from one session to another, because you can turn them all on. You can change them all with one click of a button, which I'll show you. And the same thing with the hum level. This is something new in this version as well, where you can link the amount of hum or turn it on and off so you how much noise you want to hear, again, across all of your instances, because again, that's more in a cumulative effect thing. So that's the plugin. This is on the one I did on the kick tracks. Now, what I've done is I've got uh, basically just a drum track with some, uh, some percussion claps, tambourine, some hand snaps and finger snaps and some cowbell, bass guitar, piano, a couple of acoustic guitars. All the rest of the tracks are muted because I don't want the YouTube gods to get crazy with me and flag me here. So anyway, here's without the plugin. I'm going to take all the instances off and just show you where we started. Then I'll engage them and we can walk through and we can check out the oversampling and such. And then if you want, you can go check it out below um, and we'll see what it sounds like. So here is without any of these plugins. Here's what we have. bring it in. So, I mean, you can hear, I mean, I'm not going to walk through every track and show you how I EQ'd every single, every single instance of this. I mean, I just kind of quickly dialed it in like I would on any regular kick, snare, top hat, top, you know, top, snare, top, snare, bottom, tom one, tom two, so on and so forth. I kept the hum level in the middle at um, two. And again, I'll show you that by linking them together as we did that you can see that when you link, it'll turn them all on and off. Let me just show you that. So if I open up two instances of this, here's the kick and here's the snare top. So because I have the option for oversampling in the hum level linked, if I turn the hum level to one, you'll see both plugins will turn down. If I turn it up to three, if you're wearing headphones, you can hear this, or if you have your studio monitors are quite loud, there is a, there is a very light white noise hum. It's more hiss than it, it almost sounds like tape hiss, not so much hum. So Kip in the middle. Okay. Now, again, if we go to the oversampling, and again, right now they're on 16. If I go four on this one, you'll see it's four on this one, okay? So let's do that. Let's listen back to this and let's just switch through the oversampling rates just to see, is there any difference at all? Do we hear any difference? Don't know, let's check it out. So we'll start on four times oversampling.
Okay, so what I hear in my headphones is very subtly, there's really not much of, I don't really hear any difference between four to eight and eight to 16, but from four to 16, I think I hear in the acoustic guitar, the mid range is a little bit, maybe a little bit more present sounding. And again, it's very, very subtle. There's debates all over the internet whether this stuff is really value, you know, is this really valid, this oversampling thing, or is this all kind of from a good friend of mine over at White Sea Studios? Is it snake oil? Um, and some people have different opinions on the oversampling and what it really does. And the more you, I kind of read about it, sometimes the more confused I even get on it. I just, the way I understand it is the more you oversample, the more accurate representation it is to the hardware, the way the, the way the algorithms work and the way the mod, the way the it's been sampled. So what I would tell you is if it sounds different or better to you on your particular session, use it, go ahead. Now we will take a look at the CPU usage here in studio one studio one, especially with studio one five, they really optimized, um, they really optimize things much better when it comes to CPU. So Right now, if I were to play this back and we're at, I'll switch through, we have what, 18 instances of this plugin and we're at 11%. So if I play this back. So it changes 1% from four to eight to 16 times oversampling. Now on other plugins that I've done this same kind of test with, oversampling from four to say 16 times will actually you know, almost double the CPU. So I guess it depends on the plugin. And again, you know, how, I don't know how much of a difference there really is. Like I said, to me, the oversampling thing, I'm not really sure how much of it is really hype and how much it isn't. Not to say that, Kit plugins is hyping or anything. You know, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, do your own research, take it for what it's worth. At 16 times on this particular session with these instances, it sounds to me like it gets a little bit more present. I hear it in the snare and I hear it in the tambourine as well. It just seems like the EQ curve changes a little bit. So that's, so that's that. But I mean, overall, it sounds really good, just like the first version of it. And again, I'd have to go back and watch the video to see. I don't have the first version installed on my system to do a direct comparison. I'm sure there's other YouTube videos that did it or have done that. I think this sounds really good. I mean, if you want something different, I'm a big channel strip nut, always have been. And You've seen lots of demos on this channel, different plugins, different channel strips. When I mix, I use channel strips almost 99% of the time. And um, what I like about this is its simplicity. Um, I wish it had some dynamics in it. I would assume that John McBride's Neve doesn't have dynamics in the desk, although I find that hard to believe. I'm not really sure. I'd have to go <laughs> check it out. Um, it's missing dynamics, but if his desk doesn't have dynamics and they just did the EQ and the preamp, it sounds really good. Um, it was really quick to dial in the sound. It just sounds good. Um, how does it compare this particular Neve channel strip to other Neves on the market? And I've seen some videos where people do comparisons and I don't know that it's a fair comparison in that because this particular uh, Neve console that was modeled is heavily, heavily modified. If, um, you can search um, um, Blackbird Studios YouTube channel where John McBride talks about that. And I think even for the demo and the promo videos for this particular plugin, the first version, his desk is heavily modified. It's not like any other Neve that's on the market. I, I don't, I forget the model Neve that he had, but the internal guts is not what the original was anyway. And he even says that. So to compare this to other plugins and say, is it an accurate model? I don't think is a fair comparison. That's why I'm not doing that. Um, I think it sounds great, just like I did the first one. Th I want to thank Kit for giving me this plugin. I would have bought this plugin if they didn't give it to me because I like it because it is a little different and I do like it. Um, I do like using channel strips um, and it's simple. And if you want something simple that just sounds good, that's easy, you can easily dial in a great sound that has that Neve flavor, this is it. It is very Neve sounding. Neve to me has a really nice thick bottom end, but also a nice open top end that's not harsh. And that's what this has. So 
So, I mean, it sounds great. So, anyhow, that is the version two of the KIT BB105 uh, plugin, the Neve Desk. I think it's really cool. And if you check out their website, um, and I'll leave the link in the description box, they have some other plugins coming soon a drum plugin from Blackbird and something else as well. They got a couple of new plugins, I think, around the horizon. I'd be interested to check out their stuff and, and see how that uh, stacks up to this. But so far, this is the first plugin I've ever really used from this particular company. Um, outside of the first version of this. And I thought that sounded good and I think this sounds good too. So if you're looking for something simple, something that sounds great, something that's easy to use, um, something that doesn't won't kill your CPU <clears throat> and something that, uh, that gives you that Neve flavor that's a little unique compared to other Neve maybe plugins, channel strips that are on the market and it's cheap. It's like less than a hundred bucks, even at full price. I think it's, I think full price is a hundred. I think as of the recording this video, because it just got released, you could buy it for 69. That's a no brainer in my opinion for less for a hundred bucks or less. This is a no brainer. It's a cool plugin and it sounds good. And I'm looking forward to using it on some other mixes. So thanks so much for watching this entire video. I forgot to tell you at the beginning of the video that if this is your first time here, I want you to go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com because I want to give you a free mixing course. It's right on the homepage. It's worth a hundred bucks. It's my gift to you just for you for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you take that course, and you like it, and you dig my style of teaching, and you'd like to check out one of my other paid training courses, because I have everything from recording, mixing, mastering, EQ compression, parallel compression, so on and so forth, I wanna give you a coupon code so you can get a 25% discount. Just use coupon code YouTube25 at checkout. It'll take 25% off any course on my website. All the information will be in the description box below. Thank you once again for watching. I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.